Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is a response to the video, Is Allah God? The same question has certainly been answered by Neil Carvey, who proved that Allah is the same as the Hebrew word Elohim. However, in this video I will address the specific question, Did Allah reveal the name Yahweh in the Quran? In order to answer this question, we must first ask, What is the name Yahweh? Is it Yahweh or is it Jehovah? And what does it mean? Let's look at Exodus 3.15. God then said to Moses, You must then say to the Israelites, YHWH, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, sent me to you. This is my eternal name, and this is how I am to be recalled for all generations. So what is this name? The four letters depicted in English are either YHVH or YHWH, transcribed directly from the Hebrew letters yud he va he They are the tetragrammaton, which may not be pronounced under any circumstances, and represents the most important of God's names. It is considered to be the unutterable sacred name. Because the name is so completely unutterable, it was against the Jewish philosophy to utter the name outside of the temple. So when the temple was destroyed, the name fell into disuse and was only preserved by some scholars who were able to pass it on for some generations. However, it is well known that its true pronunciation was lost by the 3rd century BC. There are many scholars who still search for the true pronunciation of this name. There are numerous versions that exist, as each sacred name researcher has his own belief about how the name should sound. The majority of scholars do agree that the name Jehovah is an impossible pronunciation of it, particularly since the sound J does not exist in Hebrew. Scholars have agreed to use the name Yahweh for simplicity alone, but in spite of that, the unanimous agreement among all of the scholars, Jewish and Christian alike, is that we do not know the true pronunciation of this name. In addition to the aforementioned, some Christian sects teach that Jesus peace be upon him, used the sacred name. However, the majority of historians who have studied the subject without prejudice have come to the indisputable conclusion that Jesus never used the sacred name. There are many sources which may be cited to support this. However, for the sake of convenience, I will only use three here. With that said, I could not presume to search the Quran for a similar name based on sound alone. Firstly, we don't know how it's to be said. And secondly, and more importantly, the Qur'an was revealed in Arabic, not Hebrew. This is precisely the reason why Jay could not find the Allah in his Bible. If he were holding an Arabic Torah or an Arabic Christian Bible, he would have found thousands of occurrences of the name Allah. Christian Arabs describe Jesus as Ibn Allah, or the Son of Allah. In Jewish Orthodoxy, it is well understood that when Moses, peace be upon him, asked this question, he was referring more to God's nature than the actual sound of his name. Names were often translated in scripture, for example from Aramaic to Greek, to make their meanings evident to readers who did not understand the original language. The most important feature of a name from a biblical standpoint is its meaning. This belief is widely accepted by Christian scholars. When a person stands in prayer, praising the Almighty Creator, what is more important? that the person knows exactly how to pronounce a name he does not understand, or that he prays with wonder in his heart as he ponders the depth of the existence of the Almighty and his attributes. This is definitely in the hearts of Muslims who praise him at least five times a day. So it's quite obvious that the only way to find the sacred name in the Quran is to search for its meaning. I would like to first take a, mo a moment to point out that when I did embark upon my research to find the meaning of the name Yahweh, I did not know at that time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taught Muhammad, peace be upon him, that there was a name in the Quran which was considered to be his greatest name. Therefore when I embarked upon this research, I was only searching for the meaning of the sacred name so that I could search for it among the many beautiful attributes of Allah which were revealed in the Quran. I was as surprised as you may be with the results of what I found. So, what does this name mean? According to footnotes in the Torah, the root of the word is related to the letters He, Yod, He, which is the verb to be. 
and the tetragrammaton denotes the level where past, present, and future are the same, therefore reflecting the fact that God's existence is eternal. The Torah footnotes also state that this name denotes God's utter transcendence and also the creative power that constantly sustains the universe. I am who I am is simply the most literal translation. Most scholars accept that the name must be studied for the depth of its meaning as opposed to the simplistic understanding of the sacred name. To quote a Christian source on the meaning of the sacred name, the Hebrew verb to be is the key to the meaning of Yahweh, but the word means more than just the fact that God exists. It speaks of God's self-existence, self-sufficiency and eternity, but it also carries the meaning of to be or become a present reality. And to quote directly from the Jewish Encyclopedia, the meaning of the name given in Exodus 3.14, where God is represented as speaking and hence is using the first person, I am. The meaning would therefore be, he who is self-existing, self-sufficient, or more concretely, he who lives. There is no doubt that the idea of life was intimately connected with the, names, with the name Yahweh from early times. He is the living God, as contrasted with the lifeless gods of the heathen. So familiar is this conception of God to the Hebrew mind that it appears in the common formula of an oath, as Yahweh lives, seen in Ruth 3, 13, 1st book of Samuel, chapter 14, verse 45, and in others. So to summarize the aforementioned sources, it has multiple meanings, living, self-sustaining, eternal, the power that sustains the universe. These meanings are also widely accepted and described in various sources. So was this essence revealed in the Qur'an? The answer is yes. There are two names in the Qur'an which denote this entire meaning. Al-Hay, the ever-living one, or more simply the living, and Al-Qayyum, the self-sustaining, the eternal, which can also be translated as the one who sustains and protects all that exists. Read together we say Al-Hayul Qayyum. I had suspected that Al-Qayyum was the answer to my question. However, upon researching the name Al-Qayyum, I discovered that both of these names together make up the Ismulahi Al-Adam, or the greatest name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Subhanahu Allah. The following are sound hadith or traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which demonstrate the validity of this claim. They can be summarized as follows. It was recorded that Abu Mama radiallahu an reported that when the Prophet wasallam said Allah's greatest name if he was supplicated with it he answers the supplication is in three surahs Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 255 Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 2 and Taha chapter 20 verse 111 this name does appear three times in the Quran just as the hadith mentioned let's look first at Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 2 and Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse 111. The other verse in which it appears is Ayat al-Kursi, which is recited by Muslims more than any other verse in the Qur'an, except for Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. What is the Ayat al-Kursi? Ayat al-Kursi is the verse of the throne. It is found in Qur'an, Surah al-Baqarah, Chapter 2, verse 255. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatu wa la nawm. Lahu ma fi al samawati wa ma fi al ard. من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء 
وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم It was narrated by Anas ibn Malik I was sitting with the Apostle of Allah, peace be upon him, and a man was offering prayer. The man then made supplication. O oh Allah, I ask you by virtue of the fact that praise is due to you. There is no deity but you, who shows favor and beneficence, the originator of the heavens and the earth. O oh Lord of majesty and splendor, O oh living one, O oh self-sustaining and eternal one, Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then said, He has supplicated Allah using his greatest name. When supplicated by this name, he answers, and when asked by this name, he gives. As we mentioned earlier, the verse most commonly said by Muslims is the Ayat al-Kursi. Why? What are the benefits of Ayat al-Kursi? Muhammad, peace be upon him, frequently told the Muslims that the greatest of all verses in the Qur'an was Ayat al-Kursi. He who recites Ayat al-Kursi immediately after each prescribed prayer, there is nothing standing between him and paradise except death. And he is also under the care of Allah until the next prayer commences. It is never recited in the house, but shaitan leaves. When you recite it when lying down to sleep at night, Allah gives you a protector and no shaitan will come near you until morning. To continue reciting Ayat al-Kursi is a means of protection for you your children and even those houses which are near your house. I should take a moment to mention that many Christian websites do not offer a meaning for the sacred name. They seem to stress the importance of the sound of it alone. After completing the initial research, I did stumble upon some other meanings. However, they did not seem to focus on the meaning of YHWH specifically. What they did is describe some of the other attributes possessed by the Almighty Lord. It is important to note that these attributes are also found in the Qur'an, such as the Creator, the First and the Last, the Forgiving, the Merciful, to name just a few. However, the greatest name in the Bible is unarguably denoted by YHWH. The greatest name of Allah, told by Prophet Muhammad to his followers, is al Hayul Qayyum found in the specific name combination in three places in the Qur'an, one of which is the greatest verse in the Qur'an. It is obviously not a coincidence that these names from both books share the same meaning, the living, the self-subsisting, the eternal, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. It is indeed proof positive that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in fact a prophet of Almighty God, why else would he know that this essence is the greatest and most pleasing to God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And please, please, don't insult the Muslims yet again by claiming that he must have heard it from the Jews. The greatest name of Almighty God was lost to history, but in his mercy he has restored it for us in the glorious Qur'an, along with all of its benefits. Subhana Allah. If you wish to pray to Allah using his greatest name, you can say, Ya Hayul Qayyum, or Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, and hold in your heart its meaning, O Living One, O Self-Sustaining and Eternal One. For, for whosoever supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using his greatest name, he answers, and whosoever asks from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this name, to them he will give. Thank you for listening. I hope that I have not offended anyone. It has not been my intention to do so. May Allah forgive me for any errors that I may have made in the making of this video.